this is going to be a, a tricky difficult conversation uh, to listen to because it's it's just so heartbreaking. Uh, Matthew Hulbert is with us and he is uh, a, a, someone who's uh, he's a Lib- Liberal Democrat councillor actually but that's nothing to do with this story. It's um, He's someone who, well his mother died um, after waiting 11 hours for an ambulance. Uh, this happened just recently. It's very good of Matthew to speak to us. Um, Matthew, you're very welcome to talk TV this morning. Thanks so much, Peter. Can you just tell us what happened? Just talk us through what happened, because I want to hear from you. I don't want to ask you too much about this. I just want to just want to hear the story of what happened. Yeah, so it was July the 10th. Uh, my mum had fallen at home, we think was 2 a.m. in the morning. She pressed the council buzzer that she had um, around her neck because um, she had fallen previously. Um, I then got alerted. I got to her... Um, obviously, I was um, uh, asleep at home, so it took them a while to get me up. They managed to um, wake me at about 4.30 a.m. I got to mum for about 4.45. Um, she said she'd hurt her ribs, so obviously we didn't move her because you're told not to. We called an ambulance at 5.01 a.m., and then a paramedic finally arrived at 4 p.m., um, uh, checked mum over, um, and further alerted an ambulance, which arrived about um, 20 to 30 minutes after that. Goodness me. So so from the time that you called the um, or well, you called 999 at, f- at, at one minute past five in the morning, it took 11 hours for an ambulance to get to her. I mean, wh- wh- what did they tell you during this process? What did you expect to happen? Because when you pick up the phone and dial 999, not that, I mean, it's a horrible thing to have to do anyway. You expect a, a rapid emergency response, don't you? You do, and um, it was actually a friend of mine who'd, who'd taken me over because I don't drive, so he called the ambulance at 5.01am and he said to me, look, they've said that it could be up to 10 hours, but it's unlikely to be that long. Well, in actual fact, it was longer than that. It, it, it was 11 hours. Um, and as you can imagine, Peter, my mum was deeply distressed during this time. She was, you know, 78, frail, um, concerned, asking when help was going to come. I kept having to say to her, look, They've said that an ambulance will be coming, and hour after hour passed, mm. um, and, and no ambulance turned up until after 11 hours. That must have been extremely distressing for her, but for you as well, Matthew. It was distressing. I mean, you don't want to see anyone um, in discomfort, in, in pain, distress, but especially, you know, one of the people that brought you into the world. And my mum was, um, as I say, she was 78, she was, she was frail, um, she was conscious the whole time, and I understand that they will have had people. They will have had people having heart attacks, etc., to get to. And of course, they should go to those first. But the system must be broken, Peter, when someone of that age, of that frailty, um, can be left for that long. It just can't be right. And how did you reassure her during the time you were saying, obviously, the ambulance is coming, something will happen? But you must have been very worried about the fact that it was taking such a long time. Yeah, it, 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 it was distressing. And to be honest, Peter, those 11 hours will stay with me for the rest of my life. Um, and a lot of people have asked me this week, do you think that, you know, if the ambulance would have gotten to there sooner, your mum still might be with us today? And to be honest, Peter, I can't even begin to contemplate that because mm. that's the kind of thing that can eat you up inside for the rest of your life. And, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I need to focus on grieving my mother um, and and remembering, you know, what a wonderful mother she was and, and grandmother. Tell us about and, her. And, tell, tell, tell us what she was like. She, she was wonderful. Um, she used to nag at me a lot. And believe me, I miss that nagging. Um, I need nagging sometimes, Peter. Um, so I really wish she could be around to, to um, uh, you know, put me on the straight and narrow uh, again now. But she was a wonderful mom, very kind, very caring, lovely, wonderful smile. Everyone's mentioned her smile this week. Um, her grandchildren absolutely adored her, um, and 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 now she's gone, and and after such an undignified eleven-hour wait mm. for an ambulance. And what do you think? I mean, you're saying the system is broken. What is your message to the health chiefs in your area and also in government who are dealing with this, who are dealing with an NHS that we spend, you know, billions, hundreds of billions of pounds on, yet we still can't get an ambulance to a seventy-eight-year-old woman who has fallen who needs it. Well, I mean, my message is that this needs to be treated, in my view, as a national emergency. And although, Peter, this goes beyond party politics, you know, I I do have to question why, um, and I can't pretend to have heard all of the 
interviews that they've given over the past few days. But, you know, I've been listening to the candidates to be the next Prime Minister, and the NHS as a whole barely gets a mention, and ambulances certainly don't get a mention. And I just think, you know, it's all right about talking about tax cutting and all of that, but what about issues like the NHS mm-hmm. that really affects people on their everyday lives? And I can tell you that when the paramedic finally arrived, and I should just say, Peter, that when the NHS folks arrived, the paramedics and then the ambulance people, they couldn't have been any more kind and caring and compassionate towards my mother, and they were distressed that it had taken so long. Yes, of course, and they're, wor- um, they're working very hard as well. It's not as if they don't yeah. want to go out, it's that they've got too much to do. Oh, 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 absolutely. So, so they did the best that they could. But um, the, the paramedic said that some people that day would have been waiting even longer than my mum, mm. 12, 13, 14 hours. And so the system is clearly broken. And I don't claim to have all the answers, Peter, but that is why we pay politicians. We, you know, we, we pay politicians to be able to speak to the health professionals to find out what is going on with them and to get into a situation where people like my mum aren't having to wait 78 hours. I mean, I'm told, Peter, that we have a situation at at some hospitals that the ambulances are backed up outside, that they're unable to offload their patients, um, that therefore they're unable to go on to to jobs in a a timely manner. Mm. And so we have a situation that that the whole system, as I say, Mm. isn't working, and people like my mum um, pay as a result. Goodness me. Uh, well, Matthew Hulbert, thank you very much indeed for sharing your story. And um, that is a tough one. We're thinking about you and we're sending every good wish to you and your family as you grieve your mother. Uh-